uh, I hope that everyone is uh, safe today and uh, is in a good mood. Uh, and I will uh, share uh, my knowledge regarding data governance, methodology, and tools topic. So uh, let, let me introduce myself first. Uh, so I am a big data architect from uh, Big Data Analytics Series. I'm part of the GCP uh, cluster. Um, I'm an owner of uh, several uh, industry recognized certifications, including uh, software architecture professional and uh, Adama certified data management professional certification. Um, what I typically do is I uh, uh, engage with our clients who are uh, uh, asking us to help uh, design data where various data solutions of various sizes uh, and complexities uh, or migrations, for example. So I typically do discoveries, pre-sales, uh, and some other architecture-related stuff. So, um, so uh, uh, the agenda for uh, today's uh, presentation uh, is as follows. So first, I will give you um, an introduction uh, to the data governance and the like definitions. Uh, then we'll talk about uh, the typical drivers and challenges of data governance. Uh, then I will present some uh, most recognized data governance methodologies and frame frameworks that are available uh, on the market. Uh, after that, I will like do a little kind of introduction into the uh, tools for data governance that uh, that are available. Uh, for use, uh, I'm not going to dive too deep into the technical details. Uh, it, it would require a separate session to cover each particular tool. I will just give you like some kind of uh, landscape overview. And if you're really interested in researching any particular one, you can always like re reach out uh, to me or we have like guys who are expert in particular technology. Um, and uh, at the end, I will uh, give you a case study of a project that SoftServe has done uh, for one company uh, that was related to data governance. Um, so uh, introduction. Um, so uh, data governance itself uh, like is a kind of uh, broad topic with uh, many different definitions. So if you just look at the uh, word cloud, uh, so Sometimes company uh, who uh, are interested in data governance, they uh, need to kind of think about like data management, implementing some kind of standards, data quality. Uh, so the, the, the term can mean like totally different things. And sometimes customers who come to us uh, asking for data governance, uh, they mean totally different things, and we kind of have to. Uh, the, first, the first thing we have to do is to identify what do they mean by data governance, because sometimes it's just adding a simple data catalog uh, to their infrastructure, but sometimes it's uh, it can be like a multi-year uh, organizational transformation that would require like huge number of resources and organizational changes, introducing new departments. So this is really uh, broad and. Uh, uh, uh like big topic uh, but uh, according to a uh, state of data governance report from 2022 most organizations define data governance as uh ensuring that sensitive data is uh, classified meets legal and regu regulatory requirements and also ensuring data quality this actually depends on who you ask if you ask uh people from uh, business uh, uh, departments, they would say the data quality is more important to them. Uh, but for example, IT decision makers, they are uh, more interested in protecting the data, ensuring that there are no risks and violations in terms of um, data management. Uh, so, uh, but According to the DAMA, which is Data uh, Management uh, Association, uh, International Data Management Association, uh, which provides an industry-recognized framework, uh, the data governance is defined as the, the uh, authority and control uh, over the management of data assets. And authority control here means uh, that you should plan, uh, execute, uh, monitor, and enforce certain policies for uh, managing of data. And here data means asset. 
because uh, it's a kind of uh, not the physical property, but still a, a valuable thing that uh, creates value for your business. And now let's talk a little bit about drivers and challenges and so data governance. Uh, so uh, the same report uh, uh, gives you like uh, an answer of how typical organization uh, like what are their business drivers and you see that the top like five are related to data quality so uh, but improved data quality itself uh, it, it's kind of an abstract thing uh, until we can uh, identify uh, what uh, business value it gives and uh, the next like kind of uh, uh, second third and fourth items in this uh, chart say that uh, improved data security is related to data quality improved analytics uh, and uh, increased uh, trust and uh, better decision making and what does it mean so uh, for example if your data is uh, let's say uh, your data quality is low then your uh, decision makers won't trust uh, this data and they won't use it to make decisions business decisions and uh, or uh, they can use this data, but they they the the level of uh, like accuracy uh, would be low, and they would make poor decision, and which would cause uh, like either low profitability or even like a financial loss. So data quality is one of the like most important drivers according to uh, most like organizations. Uh, but if we now talk about uh, the challenges of data governance. Actually, uh, the first, like the, the winner is actually data quality uh, again. Uh, and the reason why is uh, like sometimes like for most companies, data quality is like a big issue and they don't, don't simply don't know how to uh, properly uh, start a data quality program, how to manage it properly. And one of the reasons why is actually skills and uh, skills shortens and gaps uh as well as uh operational data governance and this is actually related to uh teaching like the, the term called data literacy uh, teaching your uh employees how to uh properly manage uh, data and be responsible for it and own the data as well uh there are some uh really uh important lessons uh, that uh, were uh, like brought from history and uh, try to kind of uh, look at this uh, phrase and try to think who might have uh, said or written that for a moment. Electronic data is not tangible property. So, and it was related to a tragedy that uh, happened uh, on 19th of September in 20, uh, 2001 when a World Train Center was attacked by a terrorist, terrorists. And what actually happened uh, is there were lots of insurance claims for information loss from uh, companies that were uh, located in, in those uh, buildings. And what insurers realized that they cannot really uh, cover uh, information because they thought that it's not tangible, it's not physical asset. Or they, they were okay with uh, covering uh, losses for physical assets like servers, for example, but uh, they were not able to cover the information. But companies who were affected, they said, uh, this data is important for our businesses. We do business uh, and we earn money using this data. And uh, when the data is lost, we we cannot do business. Uh, so uh, uh, that's why insurance company, they added this clause that electronic data is not tangible property to their contracts. So they are kind of protected uh, and do not need to uh, cover the loss of information, which actually is not true. And now things are changing and people start thinking about data as really something that has financial value that has a really econo economic cost to it. So, and data governance actually helps uh, to properly protect your data, uh, valuable data assets and uh, identify their criticality. Um, another uh, lesson is actually uh, related to regulatory compliance. And uh, maybe you've heard, maybe not, 
In 2018, Uber was fined in UK uh, due to uh, failing uh, to protect their data according to GDPR standard. Um, so that, that was a data breach. And uh, the reg regulator found that Uber has not implemented uh, correct data protection measures. Uh, that's why the data breach occurred. And the, the data uh, that actually was stolen uh, was analytical data. So people, uh, the data analysts and data engineers were collecting data about customers and they did not protect it properly. And that's why they, they were fine. And there are kind of dozens or hundreds of such cases happening across the world. And it's a result of poor data governance, actually. Uh, so proper, if they, they have implemented a proper data governance at that time, they would have avoided that uh, that fine. It's not certainly big, but uh, uh, like th like three, four hundred K is not, not really big a uh, number for Uber, but the reputational damage uh, is uh, what's important in, in their case. Uh, so let's talk about the available methodologies and frameworks. Uh, so data governance itself is uh, kind of uh, relate, uh, is consistent of several uh, kind of areas including process management like people management and tools so it's not only about technology and sometimes it's even more about organizational changes rather than technology um, but uh, overall uh, this is kind of not an exclusively so there are like many more organizations uh, that provide uh, data management and data governance standards but some of the uh, most uh, well known are uh, dama dmbox standard which is like uh, Dama is a nonprofit organization uh, which uh, maintains that framework and it's one of the most used and recognized frame framework for data management, not only for data governance, but for data management. Uh, then there is also Data Governance Institute organization. They also provide their, their framework. Uh, one of the uh, like recent uh, organizations that started to kind of play important role is EDM Council. So they provide CDMC, which is Cloud Data Management Capabilities Framework, and a DCAM, which is uh, Data uh, Capabilities Assessment Model. Uh, the, the, the big four uh, consultant companies, McKinsey, uh, uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Cooper, Deloitte, KPMG, and Eckerson Group, they also do uh, have their uh, data governance framework. However, they are all really similar to each other. They share like 80% of core knowledge areas. Uh, so, so there are some things they do slightly different, but uh, at the core, uh, they are pretty similar. So uh, if, if we look at the any data governance framework uh, uh, from the perspective of people, processes, and tools view, uh, so the, the, the people component uh, means uh, the certain roles are required uh, for implementing data governance. So CDO and CDGO is like, Chief Data Officer and Chief Data Governance Officers, they are main executives who oversee the overall data strategy in the company. Then there are data stewards who uh, guard uh, data on behalf of data owners. Uh, data custodian is like a person who physically manages data. For example, this can be a database admin. And there are many other roles that are a little bit more familiar to you probably. They are all important. There are like many more uh, roles that can be introduced depending on the complexity and the size of the organization. Uh, as far as processes, uh, uh, there are uh, like about 10 to 12 different areas, including data architecture modeling, uh, data integration, uh, data quality, and others. But for data governance itself, uh, the most important uh, are, are metadata management and data quality management, because they, they allow you to uh, control the quality of the data and uh, protecting and managing the data. Uh, and technology side uh, is represented by a set of technologies. Uh, these are data catalogs, uh, data lineage tools, uh, data quality management tools. MDM tool stands for, for master data management and master data is business related things like uh, your customers your orders or your office location something that is like de that defines your business entities um, um, then there are business glossaries and data modeling tools as well uh, and uh, so this picture is from dama international uh, dmbog framework it's kind of 
uh, the, the first thing that you see when you uh, Google for Dama data management, and it's the high level overview of uh, what data management framework consists of. So uh, in, in the middle, you see the data governance. It's pretty much uh, like a glue uh, that ties together all the data management areas. And as, as you can see that uh, there are like many areas like data architecture, data modeling, and design, data storage. Um, so, but overall, again, I would emphasize that uh, for data governance, all of them are important to some extent, uh, but depending on the requirements, some organizations might focus on data quality and metadata management. Uh, some might focus on reference uh, and master data management or maybe document management. That depends. Uh, but the focus of today Today's uh, presentation will be a little bit more on about data quality and metadata management, because recently uh, we can observe that many our, of our customers, they struggle with data quality. And in, in order to kind of manage data quality, it is required to have uh, a proper data, a metadata management solution in place. Uh, here, I, I, I wanted to kind of give you uh, an overview of what Google says uh, a data governance framework should look like. So this is their kind of uh vision on the data governance and if you look at the uh these key four areas they uh look uh quite similar to the demo framework and the data discoverability uh it is related to metadata management actually but they also added the data quality here data classification which is part of the data management and data classification basically means that you assign proper sensitivity labels to your data um, and data lineage uh, is a process of uh, uh, tracing data transformations throughout the data life cycle. So you understand uh, where any particular data uh, originated in, what transformations were applied, and so on. Um, there are also the generic data, manage data management uh, competencies like master data management and reference data management. Uh, and two other areas is data protection and data accountability. So data protection is pretty uh, straightforward. You, uh, it's about protecting and securing the data. Uh, and data accountability is something that is really important in data governance. And uh, uh, data account accountability means that each data item uh, should not be left on its own. Someone has to own it. Uh, and that's why uh, data governance is often uh, like uh, used together with things like data ownership, uh, data stewardship, and data policies. And another cool thing is data ethics, actually. So uh, data ethics relates to uh, using and collecting data in a way that does not harm anyone else. Uh, so maybe you've heard that, uh, like, for example, even collecting someone else's data uh, can can be uh, harmful uh, for like let's say and it, it can viol violate privacy for example so there there should be like a consent uh, uh, concept in, in introduced uh, or maybe that there are some historical biases uh, like and so on so and even open data is uh, the concept of data ethics so like being able to uh, distribute data freely and democratize the, uh, democratize the data, for example, is really huge. Uh, so it's a big and cool topic and it's uh, uh, under discussions for uh, quite some time. Uh, so uh, the, there is like a uh, hype cycle from, uh, from Gartner related data governance and analytics uh, uh, as well. And um, there are some things that are kind of uh, mature in terms of uh, the, the tooling. Uh, so uh, today, uh, uh, technologies related to data cataloging, uh, master data management, and uh, data quality, they are quite, uh, quite mature. Uh, so master data and data catalogs, they are really well developed. Uh, data quality is kind of somewhat uh, OK, but there are also uh, many more uh, technologies and trends that are just beginning to uh, establish. Uh, for example, data observability. Uh, this is basically a practice of um, uh, similar to uh, site reliability and uh, like engineering. So being able to monitor what's happening with your data in real time, uh, having uh, analytical dashboards for data pipelines, for example, or even for data quality. So uh things like that or uh, start to be uh, quite important 
for many customers. And in SoftServe, we started to implement uh, what's called data ops to operational operationalize data operations uh, and uh, kind of unify DevOps and uh, data management uh, to create like a single stream of high quality data. Um, so uh, the first kind of knowledge area I would like to talk to you about is metadata management. So uh, according to Dama, uh, data management, metadata management is a process of planning, uh, implementation and control uh, to enable high quality and integrated metadata. And integrated means that uh, the data, the metadata uh, typically comes from many different sources. So uh, like typical organization, uh might have hundreds of data sources uh, or even thousands of data sources each data source uh, ha ha has its own meta model and uh, everything has to be uh, kind of integrated in a, a single um, metadata management system and it has to be high quality metadata which means uh, it has to be complete uh, accurate up to date and uh, whatever and the three main categories of metadata and include uh, business metadata, operational, and technical metadata. And business metadata uh, is uh, attributes that describe business value, uh, business attributes of the data. For example, who owns this data, uh, where this data is uh, is used throughout the business, who are the data consumers, uh, what are the, like, for example, policies um, uh, and security standards for data. Uh, operational data uh, means that uh, kind of some uh, kind of runtime properties and uh, log based data. So let's say the amount of uh, incoming data, the log of data access, uh, stuff that's happening to data uh, in, in the runtime is, is related to operational metadata. And technical metadata um, examples include the uh, uh, let's say database uh, schema definitions, uh, file formats, uh, file locations, folder structures, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, so if, if we look uh, at the most important features for a metadata management system, it, it actually includes uh, stuff like metadata discovery, uh, metadata modeling, and metadata integration, as well as data lineage and metadata governance. And uh, so metadata discovery uh, basically means that uh, a data engineer or a data analyst or a data governance expert uh, must be able to quickly find relevant uh, metadata about a data asset that they are interested about. So for example, it can be database table uh, or uh, let's say a file in a data lake or, or a data source, for example. And it, it all has to be easily discoverable uh so there are like uh query languages available uh for data catalogs and as well as uh just generic search uh, search engines uh, and so the data lineage uh, again it allows you to trace what's happening uh, to each particular uh, item so for example it can be on a table level uh and and users can understand uh, where each particular table came from, what are the dependencies for this table, which pipelines are generating data for this table, or it can be on a even or a on a column or a row uh, level. So you, um, sometimes users are even able to trace a, a single data point to all the uh, source data points and uh, do what's called data debugging, for example. So if there is an issue. With certain uh, field, um, data engineers can just uh, uh, troubleshoot using data lineage. So examples of data uh, catalogs might include uh, commercial uh, products and allation. Uh, they're relatively, uh, well, they're, they're actually quite mature. In this area, Calibra is often named uh, leader or visionary, according to uh, Gardner. Uh, Magic Quadrant, Quadrant, and it does not only provide metadata management; it's a whole data governance uh, uh, platform. And by the way, SoftServe has a partnership with with Calibra, um, and Calibra also provides like a certification um, as as a Calibra architect. So Google Dataplex is another example of a cloud-based uh, metadata management system. So it includes a data catalog and 
data lineage and it automatically populates uh, uh, metadata for BigQuery, cloud storage, and some other uh, data sources. Um, example of uh, an open source tool would be Apache Atlas. Um, so uh, you, you can host it uh, yourself pretty much. Uh, now let's talk about the, the uh, data quality. And uh, first of all, I would like to emphasize why data quality is important. So it was estimated that uh, bad data uh, costs US $3 trillion per year. It, it was done by, uh, the, the research was done by IBM. Uh, and they realized that uh, some of the uh, issues uh, of data quality, they lead to huge losses. And uh, the research from McKinsey showed that uh, leading firms, uh, leading organizations, they spend uh, on average like five to 10% on uh, tasks that related to fixing data quality issues. And this is 74 74% less than uh, an average organization which uh, could spend up to 30% of their time, uh, of time of their data engineers or data analysts just by fixing data issues. Uh, so as an example, uh, if there is an issue if so in, in a particular report, uh, business stakeholders would need to find a person who is responsible for creating that report uh, and who's providing the data, then uh, a data engineer needs to uh find out what's happening why the report is not showing the right numbers uh what's the problem with the data maybe he needs to reach out to some upstream systems owners this takes time and uh if it's like 30 percent overhead like you can just imagine how much uh how much time and money companies spend uh, on, on on fixing bad data um, and data quality uh, itself is uh, represented by uh, six data quality measures on the top uh, dimensions. Uh, so like there, there are many more, but uh, the most often uh, often used is data accuracy, which stands uh, for um, having the proper and accurate data. So each data item should, rep uh, should be accurate and represent uh, uh, the a real world uh, entity. Uh, uniqueness means uh, that every data item should be uh, unique. There should not not be duplicate duplicates unless uh, business rules allow allow this kind of uh, behavior. Completeness means that every data should be captured. So if there is uh, like a certain number of uh, database entities, that they all have to be captured in your uh, data platform. Timeliness uh, of the data uh, relates to the um, how how fresh your data is. So the data should be up to date. So if, if uh, a table, for example, is not updated for, for a month and there the data could be considered stale and that it does not represent uh, the state of the things uh, as of now. Validity simply means the data is valid according to certain standards. Typically it's related to date formats, email formats, addresses, and so on. And data consistency means that uh, data should, should be consistent between multiple uh, data sources and multiple uh, locations. And uh, in order to kind of uh, make this uh, data quality dimensions uh, high, there are like four main uh, activities that typically are performed. Is the first one is data requirements management, uh, where this is where like business analysts or data architects or, and data stewards uh, talk to business to identify what is like the meaning of like high quality data for them and what are the data uh, quality requirements for a particular business case. Then there is a data quality control procedure throughout the, the life cycle. So data quality can be managed like on a, on pretty much every stage uh, up from like uh, data ingestion and until the data reporting. So uh, organizations do, do this differently. Sometimes they just do data quality validation at the time of data ingestion. Uh, some organizations prefer just to monitor overall data quality um, in, the, in the whole system without uh, preventing pipelines from executing. And measuring and monitoring and reporting about data quality. So this is kind of uh, data ops related concepts. Uh, so successful uh, data quality programs, they include uh, data observability dashboards where uh, data owners can uh, check on the uh, level of uh, quality of their data. And continuous improvement is 
it's pretty much a process of identifying issues with the data and uh, ensuring uh, uh, that in the future the issues that do not occur and they use the continuous improvement similar to the other uh, um, areas. So there is even uh, an ISO 8000 standard uh, to implement data quality. It's a really big standard and it uh, provides a complete framework for how to uh, implement the data quality program. So in terms of tools that uh, are available, there are quite a few of them and mo most important features include automated data profiling. So typically when you want to understand uh, current state of your data quality, you do the data profiling and you understand what uh, are the, the current uh, metrics for your data quality and uh, how far you are from your desired state. Uh, important uh, feature is also uh, data quality rules management. And uh, data quality rules management is a process of managing uh, data quality checks in a central repository. This can be uh, like config driven or it can be like just a simple UI where you just enter your data quality check, depends on the tool that you use. Uh, data quality metrics dashboards, uh, I already mentioned that it's really important to have a visibility on the state of your data quality. And uh, being able to automatically clean and enrich data is also quite important for data quality management tools. So um, again, um, uh, many commercial uh, offerings are available, including Calibra, Atacama, and Talent. They are all, all, like considered like leaders according to Gartner, and they are all commercial uh, commercial tools. Uh, but there are open source like great expectations and uh, people do quite cool things uh, just uh, by using that, that tool. And I will like show you a case study uh, from software where our team, one of our teams has actually implemented uh, quality, data quality with great expectations. So uh, talking about this case study. So uh, the... Uh, the project was done for a UK-based uh, company, mining company uh, with world-class portfolio um, uh, and like huge resource pool. And the challenge for them was to, uh, that they were a global co company, uh, which means they they have quite a few different platforms and data sources, and that that's why they like properly managing uh, the data in a single place was important to them uh, and it was an AWS based data platform uh, with uh, a data hub as a centralized metadata storage. So some of the technical capabilities they, they uh, required is uh, being able to ingest the data, store it, uh, transform the data. Uh, but one of the like also more um, like most important uh, capabilities was metadata management and governance. Uh, and uh, I will show you uh, which architecture uh, was used to uh, build this kind of solution. So the technical stack was mostly AWS uh, and uh, Data Hub and uh, great expectations were introduced as a data governance uh, layer on top of uh, the main technical stack. So uh, here you, you you can see that like overall technical architecture. I'm not gonna dive too, too deep into it. Uh, Unfortunately, I wasn't part of that project. Um, but uh, here you can see that Data Hub was kind of used to as an umbrella uh, for the whole life cycle of the uh, data management from ingestion to the visualization. Um, and Great Expectations uh, tool was introduced as part of the uh, data cleansing and validation stage uh, in the data pipeline. Uh, so you can see that the pipelines were kind of implemented as a, as an airflow, and uh, there was a separate stage uh, where great expectations uh, data quality checks were performed. And the uh, kind of value that the, the data hub and um, great expectations gave is uh, uh, they were able to onboard. Uh, uh, data and manage metadata. So uh, on this screenshot, you can see that uh, example of a, a schema uh, of a particular entity with fields descriptions, uh, that there is also a possibility to add tags and terms. There is also like a versioning available. 
And you can see that uh, there are tabs for like data lineage uh, as well and uh, some documentation and validation. Uh, so data validation was actually done by, uh, like it was integrated into the data, data hub and you can see that for a single entity called Slim, uh, Slim and Cycle, uh, there were a bunch of validations, for example, uh, the track ID values should not be null. Uh, or a maximum value for column distance travel should be uh, between uh, two numbers. Um, and there are like many, many different uh, other checks uh, that were running. So you, you see that they are all green, which means customer is getting the high quality data. Uh, but uh, the team has also implemented uh, like customization. Uh, they have introduced a data sharing workflow uh, uh, by using Asana. So what they've done is uh, they have uh, updated uh, a data hub image and they added request access button, uh, which uh, redirected user to an Asana form. And they were able to uh, request access to a certain data item. Uh, so for example, they needed to enter their name, uh, which teams, the team they belong to, their email address and uh, what type of access they need uh, to which data source. Um, so the process of access management was automated using Data Hub and Asana. And this is like really great example of uh, metadata and access management integration using open source tool, tools. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's it. That's all I wanted to kind of present to you today about uh, the data governance. The, I know it's really high level. Uh, Data governance is really, again, a big topic um, and uh, even a particular area like metadata management uh, could take like a two hour, uh, two hour uh, session to, to talk to and to, even still we wouldn't be able to cover uh, even like a small part of it. Uh, so if you're really excited about data governance, uh, feel free uh, to reach out to me. Let's, let's get in touch. Uh, I can provide you some uh, other knowledge that, that I uh, that I possess. Uh, find yourself a book to read about data governance. I do encourage you to take a look at the demo DM book. It's pretty pretty big book. It's like six hundred pages, but it's uh, kind of one of the most useful and important books in uh, the area of data management. There are some other data governance related books. I would like to, uh, to, uh, to like you to to Google the Infonomics one. It's called Infonomics by do, uh, Doug Lani, and it uh, describes uh, how you should think about data in terms of its economic value. And you can get certified by DAMA. Uh, it's a really cool certification. I have recently done an interview uh, uh, with the certification center. The link is uh, at the bottom of, the, of that slide, which uh, will be shared with you, I hope. And um, here, there, I talked uh, about the, the certification process and how uh, you can prepare for it. Uh, as a side note, like uh, I'm currently in the process of uh, creating a, a local data management, uh, local DAMA chapter in Ukraine. So if, if you are interested in uh, contributing uh, to, to it, uh, you can also reach out to me and we'll be able to create some great things uh, together in the data governance area. Uh, so with that, uh, I will uh, wrap up today's uh, presentation. Uh, hope you find it, found it useful. Hope I did not bore you to death with, with my speech. And if you uh, have any questions to me, uh, so feel free to ask right now. Thank you, Alexander. It was very uh cool stuff uh so my question is like uh like maybe from your experience or knowledge when like certain framework finds data quality issues like uh what goes next yeah so what are the usual processes around how to handle these issues so uh first of all uh that depends i would say uh depends on the uh way the data, the data quality program is established. So uh, I know some, some projects, uh, for example, uh, they simply introduce uh, what's called data validation. Uh, as like the example I showed you is uh, pretty much a data validation pipeline. So if data quality uh, check is not, uh, um, 
if, if it has not passed, then uh, the pipeline, for example, could stop and there, there can be an alert generated and uh, data uh, data engineers would would need to check what, what's happening and uh, troubleshoot and fix the issue. Uh, but this, this process kind of is not really uh, scalable uh, or sometimes it's not reliable because even even bad da data can can be useful for for reporting. So sometimes companies prefer to uh, uh, do some kind of uh, lazy uh, validation uh, so they still allow the data to come in but they provide the reporting uh, so for example data stewards or data owners they uh, can check the, the data quality reports on let's say weekly basis and if they see the data quality metric for example for data uh, validity is dropping uh, which means they are not getting uh, right data. For example, they might be getting wrong email addresses, wrongly formatted email addresses, or empty email addresses, uh, and they should start uh, the investigation process. Um, so that that really depends on the scale. Uh, for for simple small projects, it's sufficient to just implement uh, the data quality at the ingestion stage. But for big enterprise. Uh, the whole data observability should be set up. Okay, thank you. And another question. So you showed one one of the slide like people, uh, processes and technologies. So for me, like process and technologies, uh, it's usually like easier to uh, to get and understand. But so for example, if you're talking about people, uh, like whose responsibility is to like assign and establish a framework for proper people assignment for proper role establishing etc yeah so uh, uh typ typically uh if an, if an organization uh is willing to set up a data governance uh program uh there would be a data governance like a chief data governance officer or chief data officer and they are responsible to uh, set up a strategy for data governance or, or or a data strategy, whatever you call it. And they would be responsible and accountable for for the whole data governance program. And they would be assigning all all the roles. Uh, but typically, for big for bigger organizations, uh, the structure um, would require the structure of, of the organization would require to have a, a separate data governance office and also data governance council. They are kind of slightly different entities. Uh, so data governance office uh, is more related to data governance operations, while data governance council is related to setting up the strategy and the direction and enforcing certain uh, like policies and data governance office is responsible for executing them. Um, so, but yeah, I would say the most kind of important person would be a data governance officer in, in, in that case. And, and then he would assign data ownership to data stewards and distribute the ownership of a particular data asset. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other questions? It seems that no. So with that in mind, I would uh, like to thank you, Alexander, for your performance today. Uh, I want also to thank uh, everyone who joined our meeting today. Uh, wishing everyone a, gr a great day ahead and hope to see you on our next events. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.